Hello, it's James here. I don't know what we're doing this week because I haven't planned anything and the next part of the backboard's not ready for various reasons and that's what was going to be this week, so now I don't know what we're going to do. I know, let's make a tiny electric motorbike I can ride on! But it's going to have to be made out of things in my house that I have already because I haven't bought any parts. Can I use these to make an electric motorbike? Are these wheels going to be big enough? Here's my CAD for the main design. I'm going to be cutting out a 12mm ply using the CNC machine that we haven't used for a proper project yet, so that seemed like a really good idea. I'm hoping that 12mm ply is going to be strong enough to hold my weight and hold the axle on these wheels, and I'm going to drive the back wheel with a 3D printed pulley like I've done in lots of projects, and this brushless motor and a drive belt. So I think that looks pretty cool. I hope I've got some red paint to paint it. On the inside, I've got pockets cut out about 4mm recessed into the surface of the ply, so those internal pieces and the hinge for the front wheel can actually be recessed, glued and screwed into the other pieces of wood. So I've projected my sketches from the parts in Fusion onto a plane, exported that into a sketch, and then I've put it into Vectric Aspire, which I'm using to generate the G-code for the machine. And that'll simulate the tool path, show you what it looks like, then you can export that and run it on the actual CNC cutter. Well, it's cutting the first piece, and for anyone curious, the box does make a massive difference to the noise and uh, obviously the dust that doesn't escape. I still need that dust extraction thing, maybe a hose that goes in that comes out to the vacuum or another dust extractor, but it's a pretty good solution for now, and we're only cutting wood. So there's the first part, which is cut out. Now I've left little tabs in this so that it didn't fly off in the machine, and the rest is cut pretty cleanly, so we can just break that out and clean the tabs up. And that's one side of our bike. So there are all the finished parts, and we should find these fit together pretty well. So uh, these should slot in here, this piece goes in here, Obviously that braces the front forks apart and that makes the hinge there which is for the steering. So I just need to glue and screw all of this together and then we should have most of the bike. double braced all of my axle points so I've got extra discs of wood so the axle doesn't tear through the wood so easily. Right we'll let those glue up, let the glue go off, I've screwed them and glued them so they should be pretty strong and then we can give it a lick of paint. So here are all the parts together. That looks like a bike, the steering works, it's got no handlebars yet but I think we might put a washer in there actually, it's a bit wood on wood at the moment but nonetheless it steers and the wheels turn, we just need to work out how to power it and also paint it. Right, let's have a look at these wheels. So these are actually caster wheels, but inside the wheel you can maybe see there's some roller bearings all the way round inside, and they're provided with this, which they run on really well, and that runs quite nicely on a 12 mil, so that can make a wheel that runs. So the front wheel's no problem, but the back one I need to power. So I've 3D printed this, which fits nicely in there, and I've allowed bolt holes so I can bolt that right on to the other side of the wheel. And I've also printed this pulley, and that'll fit on just there, and I can glue that to the red part once it's bolted on, and that'll give me a nice driven wheel. So my back wheel's fitted with that pulley, and I've got a belt, and I've made this 3D printed holder for the motor, which is going to fit on there. And that's got a profile in to fit on that curve there, so I can screw that on and tension that belt up, and it spins the motor. So let's talk about the electrical systems. We've got a Skate ESC, which is actually a VESC made by Turning G, and that's an open source ESC that I've used on loads of skateboards, and it's really good at starting torque. A 24 volt LiPo and a twist grip left over from the Hoverbike project.
Well, my pulley's a bit off centre, but it seems to work alright. So there we go, that seemed to work all right. There's only been a couple of small issues. So the motor got really hot and it actually melted through the plastic. So you can see that screws, uh, the screws have actually melted through and the motor's now jammed at an angle. Normally I make these brackets out of ABS on the skateboards and so on, this one's PLA. So there we go, those few degrees of extra melting point really do make a difference. Yeah, I should probably use the CNC machine to make a metal bracket, but I've got a bit of practice to do on the CNC before I can actually cut metal. So I'll probably come back and upgrade it in the future. But anyway, that's it for now. I hope you've enjoyed this one episode build and testing it and it all works at the end instead of 25 episodes. If you do like it, then click on like. Even though it's a bike and not a robot, I'm making it open source hardware. So you can get a link to the CAD in the description below. And don't forget to subscribe for more updates on some of the other projects. Also, all these projects are funded through Patreon, so have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots and you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including a live stream with me and access to all my videos early. Alright, that's all for now. 